true statement. That is not true. That is a lie. Keep clapping, you jerks. Happy Thursday, everyone. We got a great show for you, plus an evil special guest. But first, the monologue. You know how bad Joe was yesterday? Even CNN had to break character, which is like one of the guards at Buckingham Palace giving you the finger. I think it's have to be honest that you can be a, a foggy, meandering a president, say like Reagan near the end, if you're winning. But if you're foggy and meandering on key questions and you're also not winning, uh, then you've got a real problem. The first part was probably the most jarring uh, to hear a president of the United States who is not Donald Trump even suggest ahead of time that an election isn't legitimate. <laughs> And even over at MSNBC, where they applaud Joe every time he makes a boom boom within 10 feet of the bathroom, <laughs> their butt head at large was broken. It was a terrible moment in the press conference uh, when, when, when he talked about uh, a minor incursion. There is no minor incursion. Putin and she and our NATO allies are not debating that right now. Mm -hmm. They see Joe Biden as weak. Yesterday's press conference did not help. And if you're Vladimir Putin, you pay attention to the cleanup. Mm, minor incursion. That's my straight edge hardcore band. <laughs> of course, there are still holdouts. They're like those Japanese pilots from World War II stuck on some island cut off from reality. And like their planes, this president is a zero. Yamishi Alcinder had a kiss ass tweet championing Joe for not lashing out at reporters. I guess she was distracted by Peter Ducey's hair when this happened. No, I didn't say that. Look what I said. Go back and read what I said and tell me if you think I called anyone who voted on the side of the position taken by Bull Connor that they were Bull Connor. And that is an interesting reading of English. You, you, I assume you got into, into journalism because you like to write. Mm, that had to be the creepiest thing Joe's done in the last 48 hours. And this is a man who sniffs children's hair the way his son snorts Parmesan cheese. <laughs> Yamish also praised Joe for making news, which he did. He lasted 90 minutes, and he didn't lose consciousness once. But he also greenlit a Russian invasion. So maybe making news shouldn't be the priority. Alec Baldwin's been making news too, but it's not good news. But hey, he gave it a shot. <laughs> Fact is, the one thing Americans care least about besides the voting bill is what Putin's doing. And yet that's all the media cared about while ignoring real concerns like rampant crime, which should be easy to cover at CNN. The sex crimes unit stops by there twice a day. <laughs> but the press is more disconnected from American concerns than Pelosi is from the dollar store. Meanwhile, walking loony bin Jen Rubin gave Joe an A minus, <laughs> which makes sense if the A stands for ambulatory. I wonder what else she'd give an A minus to. Shingles? The Olive Garden's hot dog bolognese? A blind date with Andrew Cuomo? I did love how Joe kept asking what his opponents are for. The fundamental question is, what's Mitch for? What's he for on immigration? What's he for? What's he proposing to make anything better? What's he for? What's he for on these things? What are they for? I tell my Republican friends, here I come. This is going to be about what are you for? What are you for? What are they for? Uh, Name me one thing they're for. Oh my God, that was strange. <laughs> All of the answers are obvious. You hear them every day if you're awake. Maybe he's not. Normal people will tell you what they're for, and it's not for more years of weakness, fear, and reckless spending. We want the crime wave to end. We want real borders. We want our shelves restocked. We want law, law and order restored. We want to get back to life. We want the opposite of anywhere Democrats are in charge, or at least stock the shelves with pepper spray so we can fight back. So why not focus on the primary concerns and not this <laughs> voting bill that you masquerade as a rights bill? People see through that like cellophane over a fruit basket. As for ending the filibuster, I got to say, I'm with Obama on this. The American people want less partisanship in this town, but everyone in this chamber knows that if the majority chooses to end the filibuster, if they choose to change the rules and put an end to democratic debate, then the fighting and the bitterness and the gridlock will only get worse. 
That guy makes sense. He should run for president. <laughs> of course, Joe the Unifier still uses that issue as a divider. And when called out, he acts like a four-year-old who just broke his mom's favorite antique lamp. Yes, he actually did link any or all opposition to old Democratic racists. But this is a problem with playing the race card. It's memorable, except to the person who keeps using it. Especially with Joe's memory, the only card he remembers says, do not resuscitate. In the presser, he called Mitt Romney a straight guy, forgetting that he once said this about Mitt. Romney wants to let the, he said in the first 100 days, he's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. Mm, a guy putting someone in chains? Doesn't sound like the behavior of a straight man to me, Joe. <laughs> so embarrassing when I have to call 911. I lose the key, KT. Of course, Joe doesn't expect you to remember that smear if he doesn't. And then he questioned the legitimacy of future elections. So who does he think he is? Hillary post-2016, who blamed her drubbing on every Russian since Yakov Smirnoff? Where the hell is he? Of course, the press shares the blame. Again, nothing about crime as people get picked off left and right by madmen. On every real issue, whether it's crime, COVID, or inflation, the Dems flounder because they put all their eggs in the woke basket. Imagine if Joe had focused a little on immediate concerns and not what trended on Twitter. He'd be okay. I wonder what Joe thinks. Oh, that feels good. Hey, just soaking my feet after a marathon yesterday. <laughs> That's right, I, I, I did a marathon. I didn't run one, I didn't walk one, I talked one. Just ask the press. Axios, Time, New York Magazine, they all said it was a marathon, just like we told them to. <laughs> so it, it didn't matter what I said, matters that I said it over and over for two hours, that's two hours, all right? And I hardly made any mistakes. And I only sacrificed one country to the ruthless jaws of Mother Russia. Just one little, tiny little uh, country. So I'd be smiling right now, except my knees are killing me. <laughs> and so from the rearview mirror of Joe Biden's decrepit jalopy, the one with its turn signal on the past 50 miles, that other guy, Trump, doesn't look half bad. North Korea, the peace accords, the vaccine, being right on China well before anyone else. Compare that to Joe with the supply chain, crime, inflation, food shortages, the border. In record time, Joe took the U.S. and added the letters S and R. Mm. <laughs> and even Trump. You know, when he called people names, he punched up. Merciless on political leaders, organizations, rich elitists, athletes. Joe only punches you, the American public. After all, he's doing a great job. And if you just don't get it, you're probably a racist. Bottom line, when you get to be Joe Biden, you stop sweating the small stuff, like putting your shoes on the right feet. Problem is, he sees everything as small stuff, notably your concerns and your pain. But it turns out he's the best thing to happen to Republicans since khakis and Chick-fil-A. Republicans don't have to do squat and they're already more popular than they've ever been. I don't know what that says either, except don't get cocky. Let's welcome tonight's guest. Thank you, announcer. You're welcome. The K stands for Kathleen and the T stands for tough. Former Deputy National Security Advisor KG McFarlane. He's seen more combat than the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Retired U.S. Marine Corps bomb technician and Fox News contributor Johnny Joey Jones. He's like the Stanley Cup. You're only allowed to touch him if you're a hockey champion. <laughs> Vice President of Public Relations for Z Labs, Chris Barron. <laughs> and finally, she's like a toothpick. Skinny, sharp, and easily fits into dark, disgusting places. Fox News contributor, Kat Tim. <laughs> KT, welcome to the show. Always a pleasure to see you. Honor and a pleasure here. <laughs> yes, you, you're already worried, aren't you? <laughs> what did you What did you make of the uh, the press conference, and how did you feel about the uh, I guess the priority of issues in general? I don't think you talked about what the American people care about. But yeah. I, my concern, as somebody who's a national security person, is he did basically invite Vladimir Putin mm. to move into Ukraine, 
And it's the ripple effect that that has. So mm. Putin now has a green light, maybe not to send tanks across the border, but to do hybrid warfare, which will accomplish the same thing. And then Biden tried to clean it up today. Yes. And he said, let me explain what I really mean. Yes. I mean, invasion means armed units going across the border. But that's not what Putin was ever going to do. Yeah. Cyber attacks, hybrid warfare, false flag operations. But what this, the really big problem is that whatever Putin does, you now will see China respond in March. Mm. You'll see North Korea decide it's going to get serious yeah. about nuclear weapons and Iran in the same. Now, what does that mean to the average person? Well, maybe you don't think it means too much, but it means big economic problems, big, particularly big trade and, and problems coming out of China. And when you talk about the border, which is one of the things you're concerned with, it's the fentanyl that keeps coming directly from mm. China in an effort to kill off young Americans. Yeah. Thank God I'm not an average person. <laughs> Jonathan Joey Jones, KT brings up the cleanup. Have you been following this? I mean, it's a, it is like a fight between spouses, and Joe is the husband that said that now has to apologize for everything he said when he came home drunk. <laughs> Yeah, we um, all know this. Which he can't remember, by the way. Yeah, it's like, I did not say that. Yes, you did say that. You did say that. I didn't say that. Did you record it? No, I didn't. I don't have to record it. You said it. As three I think quarters, that happens. Yeah. As three quarters of an above average person. Yeah. I sat there and watched that with an open mind. I, th I thought the press did a, a better job than I expected. They yeah. pushed harder. I mean, when you ask the president, hey, is there, you know, how do you feel about the fact most people think you're a little bit too senile to do the job? You know, yeah. that was a good question because that's how a lot of people feel. Uh, but, you know, I saw your colleague. Uh, I love him to death. He's really nice to me, Geraldo, mm -hmm. earlier, a couple hours ago. Uh, and he bragged that Joe Biden stood for two hours. And, I, and I'm thinking there are some people in government like Brian Mass or Tammy Duckworth who get a, a little bit of a slow clap for standing mm -hmm. for two hours. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, they, they don't have legs. Right. Um, but that's not the kind of thing that we're going to appreciate about a president in this much hot water. You know, he says, find a president who did more in the first year. Like, I think Zachary Taylor did more in the first year <laughs> than this guy. And, like, you know, and it, what's funny about it is anyone who, you know, might have voted for Trump and said, they're like, oh, pick me, teacher. I'll tell you all about a president who did more in the first year. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know where he, where he felt like his firm footing was uh, to keep on the leg jokes. But yeah. it wasn't behind that podium. It Very was terrible. Good. Very good. Fun, fun fact, Zac Efron not named after Zachary Taylor. Huh. Not. Not. I know a lot of people thought I was going to say was, but that's why I'm here. It's Chris. Amazing. I know. Chris, what about uh, the fact that he also believes, like Trump, that these elections are corrupt? I mean, <laughs> there was so much that he said during that thing that I was just imagining Trump being up there and saying something similar and the meltdowns that would be occurring yes. like in real time. Jim Acosta would have set himself on fire mm. during that. Yes. If Trump would have said in advance of the 2018 midterms, like, yeah, they're probably not going to be legitimate knowing that the Republicans are going to lose. Literally, Acosta would have set himself on fire. Yes. What's amazing to me is to the point about like, oh, he's talked for two hours or whatever. He did that because he thought that it was actually going to show the people who were questioning right. his ability. Right. He thought that this was going to be something good. <laughs> what he didn't understand was that every second it went on, it got worse and worse yes. and worse. It was like... It was oh, like the, ba the batteries were powering down. Yes, and that's what it looked like. It, like it came out there, and then it was like it just started drifting off, and the answers started getting weirder and weirder yes. the and more disjointed. Yeah, and it just... I was like, I know what he thinks he's trying to do here. He's trying to show people that like he's up to doing the job, but in this effort, he is undermining himself so dramatically because I can't imagine anyone who watched that and thought, man, I really feel good about President <laughs> Biden right now. We're going in the right direction, except you know, Jen Rubin. It, it is weird, though. You know, Kat, you've had a day to think about this, and I know you've spent a lot of it oh, uh, yeah. just thinking the about this. In, in but, you know, it's weird. It's like what Chris said is I don't mind seeing a politician or president even that's incompetent because I'm assuming that like that means maybe less damage will be done but the problem is he's being overrun by an entire wing so when you're watching something that weak you're going oh my god where is this country going yeah absolutely and the fact that anyone would even praise him or he'd be proud of himself for standing up for two hours. Like, <laughs> that's not a campaign Ooh. slogan. Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> vote for me. I can stand up for two hours. It <laughs> well, now, if I ever run for office, that might actually be a campaign. <laughs> yeah. So, the, uh, you know, the point is you got to have an excuse. But I think oh, that would be good. selling anybody short. Right? Like, I mean, like, you, I like things yeah. about you more yeah. than that. <laughs> it's a weird thing to brag about. Um, Joey, thank you for your standing. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. 
but I remember, okay, inter Intervention season two, there was this girl, Christy. You remember Christy? She was the tweaker. Yes. The, yeah, the, she's an alcoholic. All she does is just, she's outside of reality. She smokes meth. She trashes the house. She lives in a bunch of trash. And during her intervention, you know what she says? Yeah, well, I'm not dead, so what am I doing wrong? <laughs> and like, that, I remi was reminded of that when they said, yeah, well, he was there and he did it and like he was conscious. It's like, if you are using the same logic as this deeply meth-addicted tweaker, and I'm thinking, then, you know, things, it's not good. No, it isn't good. good. Yeah. It isn't good at all. All right, well, I think we destroyed that topic. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.